Hello and welcome to Module 2 of Making Music with Ableton Intro. In this tutorial we'll be covering in more detail the ins and outs of Ableton Session View. So I'm just going to go up to File and select New Live Set just to give us a brand new template. And if we're going to have a quick look at the Session View now. So if we go down to the middle here into our Clip Device drop area, we've got our Audio Track and our MIDI Track which we talked about previously. And we can rename these tracks by right clicking and selecting Rename on each track. Or on a PC, we can hit Control and R, and on a Mac, we can hit Command and R, and we can rename it this way. And you'll notice below each, we've got these small clip slots, and in each of these clip slots, we can load a sample, and for the MIDI track, we can load a MIDI clip into each of these as well. So in the MIDI track, we could have eight different MIDI clips playing eight different things. And in the audio track, we could have eight different audio loops playing eight different percussion rhythms. So just to talk you through some of the features down below this, I'm going to open up our project. And I'm going to play it round and actually demonstrate some of the features live. So if we just go down to the bottom here, we've got our pan control, which is this circle that's just cut off at the bottom. I'm moving this to the left, we'll pan our track to the left. Moving it to the right, we'll pan the track to the right. And if you wish to reset it back to the center, you just click the orange triangle, which is now highlighted. And that'll turn to gray once it's in the center again. Below this then, we've got our track activator, which allows us to turn the track on or off. And then we've got a solo button, which allows us to audition each track individually. And by clicking that again, you can just disable that. So if you were to stop any of the tracks, you can do so by clicking on the stop button on a track, which will stop that individual track itself. Or if that track's playing, you can go down to the clip stop button at the bottom of each track to stop them individually. If they're all playing, you can use the master controls over the right hand side. So down here, we've got a stop clips button, which will stop all the clips in the project. And we can also use the main stop button at the top here to do something very similar. And you'll also notice that there's a pan control for the master, along with the reset button. And then we've got our volume control for each track, which is this slider that moves up and down alongside the meter. So we're going to adjust each of the volumes independently. And we can also do the same for the master. So down below the track activator and the solo button is this arm session recording. And if you wish to actually record something into the bass line, then you need to have the track that you wish to start recording on with this arm button on as well. So if I hit the record arm and then hit the record button on the bass line, I can actually play notes in now. And then hitting stop and hitting play again. You'll notice there that it has recorded what I played in and it'll play that back around for me. And then just moving down to the bottom right again, we've got the preview. I'll just bring up our details section here. So down at the bottom right, we've got the preview and cue volume. And this allows us to audition samples over in the browser window. And it selects how loud those samples actually come through your headphones or through your speakers. So if I want to just flick through our drums. And I wanted that to be a bit quieter. I can just turn this volume down. And those volumes will all be brought back down. If you're not actually hearing anything as you're cycling through those samples, you need to make sure that this small blue headphone icon is actually highlighted blue. If it's gray, you need to turn that on. And one final thing I'm just going to talk about over at the right hand side here in the master section, we've got our scene selection tools. So at the minute I've built up our drums to be playing 
in scene number one, I'll just delete this. So our drums will be playing on their own in scene number one. And in scene number two, we've got our drums and our bass line coming in. In scene number three, we've got our drums, which are slightly modified with our bass line again. And then in four, we've got our drums, our bass line, and our string pad starts to come in. And in order to play these, if you click a play button on a scene selection, what it'll actually do is turn all of these buttons on. So at the minute, these are all stop buttons. So it will activate the stop on all of these tracks and hit the play button on this one. So if I hit play, we'll get our drums. If I hit play in the next one, it'll turn all of these stop buttons and activate them. And it'll turn the play buttons on on these two tracks to the left. So if I hit play on scene number four, we're going to get our string pad playing. And then by jumping back a scene, it will actually turn the string pad off by activating this stop button. So it's a quick way to create some interesting loops and almost arrange your track before you move to the arrangement window. Okay, so that was the session view. In the next video, we'll be having a look at the arrangement window.